Mastocytosis uh, is a rare disease. Uh, it is estimated to occur uh, about 1 in 10 to 20,000 individuals in general population. And it's a very heterogeneous disease. Uh, but in broad terms, we can separate it into two major classes. One is the cutaneous mastocytosis, which occurs primarily in children and is limited to skin. And uh, those children uh, have a self-limited disease. Uh, they usually grow out of it by the time they reach adolescence. Um, and they are not candidates for cytoreductive uh, treatment options because they have good prognosis. And then the uh, other major category is systemic mastocytosis. Uh, and those patients may or may not have skin lesions, but uh, they always have bone marrow involvement. And in those patients, uh, uh, when we do a bone marrow biopsy, we see collections of mast cells in the bone marrow um, uh, in clusters, uh, and they express abnormal markers, uh, such as CD25 on their surface. And uh, they carry a mutation in a gene called KIT. Um, and most of those mutations involve one particular area of the gene, uh, codon 816, and uh, uh, especially one particular mutation, D816V, is seen in more than 90% of those patients. The spectrum of mast cell diseases can have protein manifestations in patients that have one of more of the subtypes. The most common clinical manifestation is skin disease, but in those with the more aggressive subtypes of mast cell disease, they can have fevers, severe anaphylactic reactions, diarrhea due to infiltration of the mast cells in the GI mucosa, they can have liver abnormalities, which can even cause jaundice. They can have bone pain from localized mast cell infiltration and bone lesions. They can have infections, bleeding, fevers from bone marrow failure engendered by too many mast cells. So there can be a lot of different ways a person can come to medical attention uh, who with a mast cell, mast cell disease. Cytosis patients, uh, there are five different categories. The most common category in systemic mastocytosis is called indolent systemic mastocytosis. So this is the benign version of the disease. Uh, so those patients will have the bone marrow infiltrates of mast cells, uh, but they uh, have a comparable life expectancy to general population. Uh, they do suffer from mast cell mediator related symptoms uh, caused by mediators like histamine, prostaglandins, cytokines, uh, and those symptoms may include recurrent flushing of the face, stomach issues, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea that come on episodically, sometimes vasoactive symptoms, uh, low blood pressure, uh, passing out uh, syncopal or presyncopal episodes. So we treat those patients generally with anti-mast cell mediator treatments such as antihistamine uh, medications. Um, and then there are the advanced uh, varieties of systemic mastocytosis that are associated with worse prognosis and decreased life expectancy. So among those advanced uh, categories, uh, the first one is mastocytosis associated with a hematologic disorder. Those patients have mastocytosis plus another blood disorder in the bone marrow biopsy, and that disorder is usually a myeloproliferative or a myelodysplastic uh, disorder. Those patients are at risk for progressing into acute myeloid leukemia, and the prognosis is determined by the uh, course of that associated hematologic disorder. Um, the um, other uh, advanced uh, category of mastocytosis is called aggressive systemic mastocytosis. Uh, this category could be thought of as a cancer or a malignant uh, version of mast cell disease. So those patients generally have very high mast cell burdens, not only in their bone marrows, but also infiltrating other tissues like spleen, liver, lymph nodes, gastrointestinal tract, and causing disruption of the function of the tissue. For example, in a patient with liver infiltration, uh, the mast cells might cause fibrosis and portal hypertension, and that patient might experience ascites and the consequences of liver dysfunction in a patient with aggressive systemic mastocytosis. In patients with very heavy mast cell involvement of the bone marrow, we see cytopenias, neutropenias, anemias, recurring transfusion, uh, platelet uh, problems, uh, thrombocytopenia requiring uh, platelet transfusions, 
and that's another uh, manifestation of aggressive systemic mastocytosis. Some of those patients may have extensive gastrointestinal tract infiltration resulting in low albumin malabsorption and weight loss, extensive diarrhea. Uh, and uh, finally, another group uh, might experience pathologic bone fractures because of the mast cell involvement of the cortical bone. Uh, so all of those tissue dysfunction findings that I just discussed are called C findings. So if the patient has uh, any of those C findings together with the diagnostic findings of mastocytosis, uh, the patient is classified into a aggressive systemic mastocytosis category. And then there is the extremely rare variant of mast cell leukemia. That variety is diagnosed uh, by showing more than 10% mast cells in circulation and peripheral blood or greater than 20% mast cells in the bone marrow aspirate. And aspirate is the key tissue here, not the biopsy. Uh, it wouldn't be unusual to see a 20% infiltrate in the bone marrow biopsy uh, in a patient with indolent mastocytosis, but they should not be in the aspirate uh, portion of the biopsy because they tend to stick with the uh, bony trabeculae and uh, they don't become loose and uh, get into the aspirate smear. And those patients have very poor prognosis. Uh, the published case reports suggest a median survival time of uh, uh, around less than six months after the diagnosis, uh, whereas patients with aggressive systemic mastocytosis have a median survival time of around three years. Uh, there are more rapidly progressing and slowly progressing varieties uh, among each category, but uh, we are talking about uh, just overall survival uh, when we talk about those numbers. And the patients with an associated hematologic disorder, uh, the prognosis depends on how fast or if they progress into AML uh, or not. Um, so those are, uh, in general, uh, the broad uh, categories that uh, we see most often in clinical practice. There are other rare variants, uh, such as mast cell sarcoma, and another transitional group called smoldering mastocytosis, which is uh, a group between the indolent and the uh, malignant forms of mastocytosis, but those are uh, rare patients. Uh, and uh, uh, we uh, um, usually uh, adopt treatment options for those patients based on what we know about patients with other advanced varieties.